President Trump addressed the virtual National Catholic Prayer Breakfast today, highlighting his administration's efforts to advance pro-life measures and taking the opportunity to unveil a new executive order on the issue today. Today I am announcing that I will be signing the Born Alive Executive Order to ensure that all precious babies born alive, no matter their circumstances, receive the medical care that they deserve. The Born Alive executive order requires the Secretary of Health and Human Services to protect newborns, including those born extremely premature or with disabilities. The order states that it is now the U.S. policy to recognize the human dignity and inherent worth of every newborn and infant and ensure, and it ensures rather, each child has the protection of the laws to which every person is due. And joining us now for more on the Born Alive Executive Order is Jennifer Lichter, Deputy Assistant to the President. Jennifer, good to see you. Thank you for joining us today. Sure so, thing. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so what kind of protections does this order give to newborns and infants, especially those born prematurely? Right, so this executive order uses essentially every tool in the executive branch tool, toolbox to increase protections for babies who, as you say, are born prematurely or otherwise in medical distress. The, the theme of the order, the sort of key message here and, and the goal of what we're trying to achieve is that every baby born alive, no matter the timing or the circumstances of that baby's birth, no matter how premature or the medical condition the baby's in, is treated with dignity and receives the protections that baby is due under federal law. First notification, the HHS secretary is instructed to make sure that every relevant hospital, so every hospital that receives federal funding and has an emergency department, is aware of its obligations under federal law to screen and then treat as appropriate every baby born alive, and also that they're aware that they're not excused from complying with those legal obligations just because a baby is born, for example, before 24 weeks gestation or otherwise in medical distress. We're also asking the HHS secretary to make sure that parents and hospital staff are aware of the way in which they can submit complaints of possible violations of these laws to HHS for consideration and investigation by the federal government. We want to make sure that parents know their rights and have a recourse if they mm -hmm. think that those rights have been violated. Two, enforcement. HHS is instructed to vigorously enforce these laws and make sure that any hospitals that aren't complying with them and fail to examine fail to render appropriate treatment to babies born alive are held accountable for that. And then finally, funding. The order instructs the HHS secretary to look in every nook and cranny of HHS funding programming and find every opportunity to increase funding for neonatal research. And this is specifically research that will hopefully increase the survival rates for babies born super prematurely or with disabilities or other medical conditions. Mm -hmm. We're also asking the secretary to find opportunities to fund training for medical professionals so that they become more proficient at rendering treatment to babies born under those circumstances. Why is it necessary? How common is it that hospitals deny these infants the care they need? Right, so I think and hope that most people assume that federal law is followed and that it would be obvious to a healthcare provider that when there is a live patient in front of you, you should render an examination and then treatment when you can. Unfortunately, that's not always true. Um, you know, sometimes these fact patterns hit the news and sometimes they're just private traumas that parents bear on their own, but we do hear and HHS does hear over and over again about hospitals that tell parents, I'm sorry, you know, there's nothing we can do. We're honestly not even going to, uh, we're not even going to render an attempt to examine your baby, stabilize your baby because of X, Y, or Z circumstance. Jennifer, why has he made fighting for the unborn such a priority in his administration? Well, this is an issue that's important to President Trump, and I think that was obvious from before he was elected, right? When he was candidate Trump, he made it very clear that the dignity of the unborn was something that really resonated with him and something to which he's personally committed. He then built a staff around him who um, he instructed to find every opportunity to protect the dignity of human life and, and defend the unborn. And over and over and over again, he's encouraged the staff um, to continue to look for opportunities to do that. Jennifer Lichter, Deputy Assistant to the President, thank you again. It's good to have you on our show. You're welcome. Thanks for having me.